Hi, fifth grade. Today we are going to start our messy paper mache emojis. Hope your sleeves are all rolled up. It's going to be fun. Right now we are studying emojis. Emojis represent an emotion, or maybe you're just too lazy to type something, but it's an easy way to communicate with other people. Now, we also talked about a type of art that represents things in popular culture. So emoji would be considered part of that art. Who could raise their hand and tell us what type of art that was? I hope someone said pop art. So pop art would be anything that is popular. Usually it's kind of cartoon style with very high, bright colors. One of the most famous pop artists was Andy Warhol. So you might have seen this image before. He liked to do really bright, colorful images of things that you would find in your everyday life. So everyone has tomato soup at home. The thing that he would like to do, though, is he would like to repeat the same image over and over again in different colors. The idea was that if we repeat an image more and more, it starts to change our ideas about it. Now, we are not the only civilization that has used images to communicate. What was the ancient civilization that used different hieroglyphics to talk to each other? I hope someone said the ancient Egyptians. So next time you see an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, you will know that, oh my gosh, they were using emojis before we even thought of them. Today we'll be doing paper mache on a balloon. Paper mache is the process of using different types of paper. We're going to be using newspaper today and then copy paper next time to build up at least six different layers of paper around an object. We're going to be using glue mixed with water, so I basically just call it water glue, and that's going to help the, the torn edges of the paper stick to each other, and it's going to create the surface for our sculpture. Yes, we are going to be using a balloon. I have a balloon for everyone. Don't worry about my germs being on it. I did not use my mouth to blow these up. Um, I used an air pump. So it's going to be really tempting to kind of play with these. I'm expecting that since y'all are fifth graders, y'all can handle this fun project. But if you're deciding that you want to play with these or throw them or do something really silly with it, maybe I can't trust you to be in this class. Maybe you need to go back to Miss Bolstad's class and redo all of her projects. That wouldn't be so fun. So today is going to be very imperative. You have to finish today. So... I'm going to go over directions as quickly as I can because I actually need you to really focus today. We're going to be working until the very last few minutes. So before I pass out the balloon, I'm going to pass out this piece of newspaper, one per person. This is what we are covering our balloon with. However, it is much too big just to wrap around. I'm going to give this to you, and you need to quickly take it and tear big strips. The easiest way to do it is just kind of look at it as if you're going to read it. And then start from the top and then tear towards you. For some reason, the paper works really good. It's really hard to tear this way. It just looks all wonky. Just tear towards you, all of it. You're going to have these really long strips. It doesn't matter truly how um, thick they are as long as you don't make them too, too big. So please, without talking, just so we can get started quickly, go ahead and tear your entire piece of paper into strips and then give me a quiet thumbs up so that we can move on to paper mache. Okay, so everyone should have given me a thumbs up because we're ready. Now, before I pass out balloons, I'm going to show you how to paper mache this. If you have a latex allergy, I need to know. Your parents should have let you know if you have a latex allergy or not. Raise your hand if you know that you have a latex allergy, and we will find some other thing for you to do. So I'm going to pass out this glue. It is not the glue from your bins. Please don't put this in the bins. That's not where it goes. This we're just going to call the green glue. I put some green tape on it to make it different from the glue in the bins. But basically, this is glue mixed with water. Don't touch it, but when you do touch it, you're going to make sure that it's closed. Give it a good shake. You want to get the water and the glue mixed. Sometimes it separates. And then you're going to be using this to apply strips to the balloon. When you are ready, I'm going to take a strip. And you want to make it a little bit smaller. So, you know, you have these really long strips. You want to make them just a teeny bit taller or smaller. And then you're going to add a little bit of water glue to it. And that's why we have these mats today. It's going to be a little bit messy. Take that glue. Try to get saturated. You want the paper to be wet. Otherwise, it will not fix itself onto the balloon. You're going to carefully, carefully, carefully take the balloon and put it on. Easy as that. Now it gets harder as you go. 
So the reason that we're tearing is because, you know, you might be able to see it, probably not with the camera. Oh, well. But there's these tiny little kind of hairs coming off the torn paper. That's just how the newspaper is. When it's wet, those fibers become like Velcro. So that's why this works so well, is because if you cut the paper, this will not stick to the balloon. It'll just stick up. But the torn little bits on the end that are getting wet, they like to stick to things. They get static electricity. And then that's why they work so well. When you're attaching these, you want to make X formations. So what that's doing is it's creating layers. So now that one's a little bit thicker and it's going to be stronger that way. So you want to go um, overlapping motion. So don't always go in one direction all over. Try to make it different. Overlap it. We're going to have to cover this whole balloon with at least three layers of newspaper. So once you've covered the balloon, you got to do it two more times. And that's why I'm like, we got to rush today because we don't have much time in art, unfortunately. I try to make my videos as quick as possible, but basically you're going to go over the whole thing. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to cover this with layers. Remember, we must finish today. So as you can see, I'm going in layers, going all over. Your hands will get messy. Please don't ask to use the restroom or wash your hands because they're just going to get messy again. All right, so as you can see, I'm getting there. You do not want any spots showing. I'm still not done with my first layer, and remember, you have three to do total. You're going to see spots where the paper's coming up. If you see spots where the paper's coming up, think of those as little, I don't know, cuts or something. You're going to take wet pieces of the newspaper and try to get those down. You do want a smooth surface because when we start painting these, if you have stuff that's sticking up, it's going to look a little bit funky. Let's just say that. It's going to look a little bit lazy. You really want to take your time and make sure not only that you've covered up all of the spots that you can, that you've taken that time to find those spots where it's still sticking up a little bit. And then just think of these little pieces of paper with the water as Band-Aids and just Band-Aid it down. I promise as you start going, it's going to get smoother and smoother. You just got to try really hard today. Like I said, go over as many layers as you can, crisscross, formation, overlapping, should be good. I always get the question, well, I actually get two questions a lot. Um, the question is, do I have to go over this thing? I don't know what you'd call this. I'm just going to call it a niblet, the piece where the balloon is tied. You do not have to go over it. Try to get as close as you can because that's going to be where I'm going to attach the string and have these emojis hanging in the school. I think that would be really fun if these were hanging. I'm done with layer one. I have to do more layers. I get the question a lot, Mr. Belfield, Mr. Belfield, am I done yet? And the answer is, I don't know. But the more layers you add, the stronger this will be. If you only do one layer, this is going to fall apart because chances are this balloon's going to be deflated by the next time I see you. Um, so you need to add as many layers of this newspaper as you can. That will make it stronger. Otherwise, it will fall apart, I promise you. All right, so along with layers, here's the most important thing. Every single person is going to look exactly the same. I need to know whose is who. So I'm going to be passing out a sticky note. I'll come around, and I'm going to ask you how to spell your name. Now, I, some of you already know. Some of you are new to Christy. Please don't be offended if I don't know how to spell your name. I'm not the best speller. There's a reason I chose to be an art teacher. You're going to keep this on your table. Don't touch it till the very end because at the very end, when you've done all the layers, and I'm going to give you all your warning, like, heads up, we got to start cleaning and get out of here. You're going to put your sticky note on it, and then you're going to put it on my cart, which should be over there when we start doing paper mache. All right, so obviously I have a lot more to do. There's really no reason to be done you know, first, because there's still spots where I need to go over, smooth it out, give it band-aids. So this is not done by any means, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you the cleanup procedure so that we can get started a little bit faster instead of me talking for hours and hours and hours. So when I say hands on top, that means stop. I'm going to remind you, but you need to put your sticky note on your ball, on your emoji. I usually give it a little bit of pressure so I know that's going to stick, and then place it on the cart. Do not touch it again. These need to dry. Don't touch anyone else's. Next thing you're going to do is you are going to take your placemat. You do not need to clean it. We are going to place these over here. So we're just going to make a pile over here so that I can have another class clean them for you. We might use those next time. I'm going to have the tub for the glues. Just make sure that they're closed. It's really important that they're closed because remember, this is like water. It's going to leak everywhere. And you'll put it inside the tray. 
Then next you're going to take a wet wipe and no, this is not for your hands. We are going to clean our hands outside. So please don't say, Mr. Belfield, Mr. Belfield, my hands are dirty. Wait, wait, wait. Don't be a little baby. Just use the wet wipe to clean your table, even if it's not dirty, even if you're really good about keeping your mess on your placemat, clean your table. We're gonna set a timer for two minutes to do this. If we can clean up in time, we're gonna go outside and clean our hands in the sinks outside because my sinks are really dirty old water, so you don't wanna use those to clean your hands. All right, guys, I'm expecting cleanup to go well. Work hard. I would use a voice level one or two, but you probably don't wanna be talking because this is going to be intense. Y'all need to work really hard today. All right, guys, I will see y'all later. Bye-bye.